Good day everyone. So for this week, for the next two weeks rather, yeah, we will be discussing hematology. Hematology primarily in those aspects um, with regards to your RBCs. So in general, hematology means, of course, it's the study of blood, its nature, and its diseases. So in most mammals, um, the total blood volume would actually account for 7 to 8% of their total body weight. And as previously mentioned in the previous um, lecture slide, you have your plasma, which is the um, liquid medium of your blood. It constitutes about 45 to 65% of your total blood volume because it is the liquid medium. So with 90% of which is water and 10% are dissolved solutes. So um, proteins and organic ions, hormones, pigments, vitamins, dissolved gases, and 100% uh, of which comprises your plasma. So an important aspect of hematology is the study of um, the origins of the blood of our different blood cells. So of course the process of which um, which describes how our blood cells are developed is your hematopoiesis. So it is actually subdivided into three: your granulopoiesis, which is um, for your granulocytes, primarily your white blood cells. Erythropoiesis, um, which we'll be tackling within, the, within this video lecture, which is for the creation and development of your RBCs, and megakaryopoiesis, which is for your platelet. So in general, those cells involved in hematopoiesis are actually stem cells that arise from your bone marrow. So they are stimulated, their development into these specific types of cells that we, come, we will come to know, um, is processed by different stimulating factors. And again, our, our key here, our key point here in this video lecture is on erythropoiesis, which is primarily driven, the, the creation of RBCs is actually um, driven by erythropoietin, which is a hormone that comes from the kidneys. So this is an overview of your um, erythropoiesis. So as previously mentioned, actually all of the blood cells from the um, the different blood cells, including WBCs and um, your platelets, are actually derived from um, your myeloid stem cells, which are found inside your bone marrow. So through the action of several um, growth factors, um, they actually develop and specialize into different types of cells. So these are the process actually um, ng, that, that is specific for your RBC. So first, from your stem cell, they will develop to become rubriblasts. Ito. Then from that, nagiging pro, pro-rubricite, rubricite, then a series of rubricites, then meta-rubricite, reticulocyte, and erythrocyte. So if you can see here, as the process actually go, um, as the process goes along, um, nawawala ang RB, ang RBC, ang nucleus rather of your um, erythrocytes which are normal in um, mammalians, mammalian RBCs kasi wala namang nucleus yun siya. And in replace of the nuclear um, nuclear part of your cell, they actually accumulate um, hemoglobin. Because again, the, the, the primary role of your RBC is to carry oxygen to different parts of your body. So oftentimes, the nucleus is not that important for that function. What is important is hemoglobin. That's why at, at, as they process in the bone marrow, they actually extrude out their nucleus in lieu of accumulating um, hemoglobin. So, of importance for us in clinical pathology here, actually all of these are important, but of prime importance to us is the reticulocyte and your erythrocytes. So, so our so WBC side naman, again, they, um, they also originate from the same myeloid stem cells. So from, their, from that stem cell, they, through the action of different growth factors, they become myoblasts and they differentiate into different types of WBC, so promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, band cells, and you have your granulocytes primarily, your neutrophils, your eosinophils, and your basophils. So you also have your monocyte, which will later become your macrophages in your different parts of your body. So first, let's go through um, the specifics of your erythrocytes. So first, because let me introduce you to the term called erythron. 
So yung erythron is the functional unit constituting the mass of circulating red blood red cells and the erythropoiet erythropoiesis tissue in your bone marrow. So basically what the erythron means is the entirety of all the cells circulating in your blood and also the erythropoietic potential of the cells found in your bone marrow. So in contest, we have a term which is not here but rather you have your um, erythrogram. So erythrogram is basically the collection of parameters that you test to check the functionality of your erythron. So erythrogram could include your WBC count, hemoglobin concentration, and others that we will discuss later on. So basically, your RBC has some um, primary functions. Of course, as previously mentioned, um, it serves to carry hemoglobin, for which hemoglobin is the carrier of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So oxygen towards the cells and carbon dioxide from the cells towards the lung for expiration. Of course, in addition, aside from being the cells that carry oxygen towards um, the tissues, um, your erythrocytes also add volume to your blood. So, pinapadamin niya because of its mere presence in the plasma. So, there, there are several characteristics of RBC. So, of course, um, it is comprised mostly of water as most cells in the body. It's comprised mostly of water and around nearly more than a third of it is hemoglobin as we just mentioned kasi nga ini extrude yung nuclear material ng ano nuclear material of RBCs in lieu of the hemoglobin for its oxygen carrying capacity and others um for example include your inorganic and organic materials so structures of course like most cells it is membrane bound and an important feature again for mammals specifically for mammals is that their cells are unnucleated. So, walang nucleus ang mama, cellular, ang RBCs rather ng mammals. Whereas, avians, amphibians, and other reptiles, meron silang um, nucleus yung RBCs nila, as we will discuss later on. So, there are several characteristics naman of different um, um, species that you may see, especially in blood films. So, pag sinabi natin blood films, mga blood smear, so, si dog, you can clearly see that it's distinctly biconcave. So, nakikita mo na para siyang may cave in both of both sides of the, in the anterior and the posterior sides of the cells. So in, in other domestic species naman, they are flat, flat disc with little to no depression. In the deer family, meron silang sickled cells, somewhat elongated, so parang oblong yung ano niya. Then, similarly, si camel, ano, camel, mga camelidase, they all have oval erythrocytes. So there are several uh, factors that affect the production or maturation of erythrocytes. So several factors that affect erythropoiesis. So of course, first is the adequate supply of globin because it is important to take note that um, almost one-third of the mass of your RBC is hemoglobin. So globin is an important part. Of course, um, together with globin, you need um, iron primarily. Then, hematopoietic factors, of course, you need the stimulant for hematopoiesis, primarily your erythropoietin. Photoporphyrins may inhibit it. Then, you also need, uh, with regards to um, synthesis, you need B-complex, primarily B12 and um, other um, B-complex vitamins. So, as we've mentioned, hemoglobin, um, comprises around one-third or around 35%, approximately 35% of your RBC mass. So in general, um, your hemoglobin is composed of four molecules of heme and one um, globin molecule and one iron molecule. So one hemoglobin molecule binds four um, oxygen molecules. So in general, there are more than 200 million hemoglobin in hemoglobin molecules in one RBC cell, so times 4, so that is its oxygen carrying capacity. So here, this is just a brief um, tabular presentation of um, the different um, morphological features of your um, RBCs of different species of animals. So as you can see here, um, of these species, uh, 
of these animals mentioned here, the biggest in diameter, in terms of diameters, is actually your dog, and the smallest of which is your goat. Um, a special feature here also is your, again, avians, together with other amphibians, their nucleus is, uh, their nucleus in the RBC is present. So just another um, figure to depict what, 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 what we saw on the previous slide. So again, um, a special feature of the dogs, as we recently mentioned, is that they, they are distinctly by they have cells that are distinctly biconcave. So what does that mean? So they're the central pallor, as you can see here, itong pale sa central part ng cells nila are very distinct and you can actually see it. Parang kumbaga, parang siyang salbabida, kumbaga, na may, 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 parang may butas sa gitna. Hindi talaga siya butas, pero parang may butas sa gitna. The central pallor is very distinct sa dogs. Or as hindi masyado siyang distinct when we compare it to other species. And again, as we just mentioned, yung RBC ng goat is very, very small when compared it to the, um, sa dog. So in general, the lifespan of um, mga, ng RBC ng dog is around 120 days. So speaking of canine erythrocytes, so they are generally large. They are somewhat uniform, have biconcave discs na makita nyo na. They, are, they have biconcave disc with an area of central pallor. So para, as previously mentioned, parang nga siyang may butas sa gitna. But that, that, that is not butas. That is just a consequence of them having by concave discs, para siyang, yun So, there, it is normal for the dogs um, to have a number of polychromatic cells. So, mga less than one, less than 1.5% are reticulocytes. So, when you say polychromatophilic cells, these are reticulocytes. So, if you can remember yung diagram kanina ng erythropoiesis. So, again, um, Reticule, if you can remember, the reticulocytes are yung last stage before the mature RBC. So, if um, usually, the, if, are, if there are a large number of reticulocytes present in your blood counts or your blood films, it usually indicates na minamabilis ang pag ng blood. So, in general, sa dogs, um, less than 1.5% of our reticulocytes seen, hindi naman siya um, abnormal. It is, it is normal. So, nucleated RBCs and howl jelly bodies are also normal in small numbers in non-anemic dogs. And the lifespan, as you previously mentioned, of canine RBCs is around 110 to 120 days. Now, we have your feline RBCs. So, they are smaller and more variable in shape, in, si in size rather shape also compared to your dog RBC. So, there is little to no central pallor. So, compared mo sa dog kanina, yung, yung sa dog, para siyang salbabida na as if may butas sa gitna. But, in here, in feline electrocytes, wala masyado siyang central pallor. So, polychromatophilic cells are very, are very few in healthy. So, again, less than 1%. Okay na makakita ka as long as it's not madami. Hemoglobin of cats is more susceptible to oxidant injury than other species. So, be careful sa mga toxicants, those, especially those that affect hemoglobin. So, mga Heinz bodies, uh, I will explain later what are these Howell Jolly bodies, yung sa dog kanina and Heinz bodies. So, a small percentage of Heinz, uh, erythrocytes with Heinz bodies can also be seen in cats. Then, Howell Jolly bodies, ito din, very normal, very few is normal. But their lifespan is a bit shorter compared to dogs, which is um for cats is only 65 to 76 days. For horses, um, meanwhile, they are about the same size as your cat RBC, and similarly also lack the central pallor. Again, walang walang medyo walang white um pale air on the center of the RBC. So, they display prominent relu formation. So, this relu formation is para siyang stack. It appears like stack coins. So, this is a special feature of um, a coin RBC which is normal for them. 
um, relu for patient in other species would indicate some some type of pathology. But with regards to equine RBC, relu formation or making parang ito, para siyang takapatong patong na coins baga, it is normal for them. How will jelly bodies in few numbers is also normal. Polychromatophilic cells, again, your tequila sites are observed um, in blood of healthy horses, but it's rarely seen in anemic horses. So their lifespan is somewhat longer than that of the dog. Um, for horses, it is 140 to 150 days. So now, let's move on to your bovine RBC. So they are similar in size to horse or equine RBCs. Excuse me. Equine RBCs, and they also lack the central pallor, as you can see here. There are very few cells with central pallor, pero um, in general, medyo wala siya, similar to your horse and your cat. There's a, a small degree of anisocytosis, so as I will describe later on, but um, unahan ko na lang, anisocytosis is differences in size. So, as you can see here, this is a normal um, bovine RBC na magkaiba-iba sila ng size, but that is generally accepted as normal with regards to your bovine RBC. So, they rarely display relu formation. So, in, compare, in comparison to your horse, which is displaying relu formation in health, but in in the case of your bovines, um, they do not display it whether in health or in disease. So, lifespan is around 160 days. So, medyo matagal siya compared to your horse. And polychromatic polychromatophils or mga reticulocytes are not usually observed in blood smears in healthy non-anemic cattle. Although, they may be seen in response to an anemia, to anemia, to, a, to an episode of anemia. So again, anemia is um, lowered um, RBC counts or um, parameters with regards to your RBCs. So, in kung baga, pag mababa yung level ng blood uh, RBCs, um, again, Siyempre, dapat minamadali ang production ng RBC kasi kulang nga. Such is the case in your, pag ang animal is anemic. So, polychromatic filic cells, your reticulocytes, often nakikita mo yan siya pag binamabilis ang production ng RBCs. And lastly, um, you have your caprine erythrocytes again. They are the smallest in general in domestic animals. And they are smart um poikilocytosis so poikilocytosis naman is differences in shapes so as you can see here um iba-iba talaga yung may, may pagkakaiba-iba yung shapes ng RBCs nila which is which is normal to them um which is more prominent in kids um that are less than 3 months of age the lifespan is somewhat similar to that of the dog around 125 days and they do not display um, prominent reticulocytosis in response to anemia and lack of poly polychromat polychromatia um, referring to your reticulocytes and peripheral blood in health. So you don't usually um, expect to see reticulocytosis or um, increased number of reticulocytes in response to anemia among goats. So now, let's go to um, different confirmations and aggregations or different um, appearances of your RBCs. Ito na, dito na tayo sa mga pathologic conditions or pathologic, um, again, um, confirmation and aggregations that we usually see in your RBC. So again, um, we have your ROLU formation. So, they resemble stacks of coins. So, parang pinatong-patong na mga coins. Again, this is normal in your um, horse and not normal in other species that we have mentioned. So, they are parallel to your um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, um, common in healthy horses as previously mentioned. Um, it could be seen mildly in dogs and cats during inflammation and neoplasm, so mga cancer episodes and but it is very rare in ruminants in health or in disease. So next you have your um, agglutination. So they are grape-like aggregation of RBCs as you can see here. Nagkukumpul-kumpul yung RBCs. So they are present 
you can see that there is an ag ag there is agglutination if na dilute mo yung blood sample mo 50-50 or 1 um 10 is to 90 percent ito ha ng pos uh, faucet buffered saline pag na dilute mo na yun siya kasi usually this would happen this may be an artifactual finding if hindi mo na dilute yung blood sample mo and meron meron ganito but if you have diluted it to 50-50 or 10 is to 90 using phosphor buffered saline, pag meron pa rin siyang ganito, this may be a um, pathologic manifestation. Excuse me, that is agglutination. So, anemic animals, it is an indication of a antibody-mediated effect. So, for example, you have your agglutination in cases of immune-mediated um, anemia in dogs. So, there is a pathologic cause for agglutination of RBCs. So, let's go to the morphology of your um, erythrocytes. So, when there is variation in size, there is anisocytosis, as you can, um, as you na described natin sa bovine RBC kanina, there is variation in size. So this may be present, um, this may present as macrocytes or microcytes. Ma uh, ma microcytes or macrocytes. So first you have your macrocytes, of course, macrocytes, malalaking RBCs, as you can see here. So they represent large cells with increased MCV or mean corpuscular volume. So mas, mal mas mataas yung volume ng cells nila compared to Others, as you can see here, may mga maliliit, may mga malalaki there. So, they exhibit polychromasia, ayun, blue, medyo bluish yung color nila, light blue-gray, which represents and represents the reticulocyte. So, again, polychromatophilic cells in the reference to RBCs usually um, refer back to reticulocytes. So, normochromic naman na RB um, normochromic macrocytes um there is um there is you can see this in cases of macrocytosis in poodles in cases of feline leukemia virus pre leukemia in cat and dogs erythroid aplasia in cats and b12 deficiency especially in giant schnauzers um, a breed of dog of course kung may macrocyte meron ding microcytes ito yung mga maliliit na cells so they are smaller erythrocytes and usually they appear when there is iron and peroxidin deficiency. And of course, because they are smaller, the cellular volume or the MCV, your mean corpuscular volume or the volume of the cell in general is lower kasi nga maliliit sila. So they may have Heinz bodies and other fragmentation um, in part of their anemia. They're usually seen in portosystemic shunts and in cases of hyponatremia, but they are normally found in healthy Asian breeds, so such as your Akita, Chow Chow, Sharpe, and Shiba Inu. So they are normal in dogs with a, uh, Asian dog breeds such as this. Now, going back to your polychromasia, so of course these are macrocytic RBCs. So they are, as we previously mentioned, they are blue-gray in color because they have residual RNA. So hindi pa nila na-extrude completely yung kanilang nuclear, um, ay, nuclear, um, nuclear or nucleic acid content. So they are macrocytic. They are synonymous with reticulocytes. So when you see this, it, may, it, it indicates that these are reticulocytes. So they are associated with increased erythropoietic activity. So usually... At increased, erythropoietic, increased erythropoietic activity or increased um, production of RBCs is associated with um, regeneration response to anemia. Kasi nga, in cases of anemia, kulang ang RBCs, kulang ang hemoglobin. So what does the body do? So of course, kailangan niya bilisan ang paggawa niya ng RBCs, which is your erythropoietic activity. So usually, um, sa sobrang pagmamadali, <laughs> ng katawan to create RBCs, to produce RBCs. Pati yung mga unmature RBC stages, primarily reticulocytes, are released into the bloodstream. Now, the degree of regeneration is actually um, related to the degree of, or degree or number of polychromatic cells. 
and also indicative the degree of anemia. So, pag madaming, you can see madaming polychromatophilic cells or maraming reticulocytes, it may be that the degree of regeneration is very, very fast. And at the same time, the degree of anemia is very, very severe. So, the body is trying to cope up fast. So, few polychromatic cells or reticulocytes are normal in dogs and cats. It is less normally seen in cattle and it is unusual to see them in horses whether in health or in sickness. So in contrast to polychromatic felix cells, you also have your hypochromic cells. So these hypochromic cells are as, as the name implies, kulang sa hypochroma, kulang sa color. So they are characterized by decreased cytoplasmic staining as you see as you can see here there is an increased central pallor so central pallor refers to this parang butas at, at it, it seems na may butas yung gitna ng RBC but these are not holes but rather they are increased central pallor because kulang yung content ng hemoglobin ng mga cells na ito so this is seen in um, iron deficiency Lead toxicosis, which is in, which inhibits your hemoglobin synthesis. Um, um, uh, careful as we mentioned kanina, the, the hemoglobin of cats is very prone to display this because the hemoglobin is very prone to um, a lot of damages. So, um, not only including your lead toxicosis, madami pa. Then in avian blood films, um, again, lead toxicosis and inflammation, we may, be, we may be able to see these very pale, pale RBCs due to such causes. So basically, conditions that inhibit um, hemoglobin, hemoglobin synthesis or conditions that render the body to not have or to not have sufficient amount of RBCs or not sufficient amount of hemoglobin in the RBCs. Is you do take note that hemoglobin is the primary colorant or the primary, it provides the cells with the red color. So for poikilocytes naman, compared to, if anisocytosis means differences in size, poikilocytosis means differences in shape, so abnormality in RBC shapes. So as previously mentioned, diba, um, the most prominent species that is display prominent for kilocytosis is your goats. So it's normally seen in kids, which is which is um excuse me. They have structural structural hemoglobin switching. We may also see this in pigs of any age. Not this is not considered normal when you see RBCs of different shapes, to like nito hindi mo na maintindihan kung bilog ba sila or what. But if you can see this in other species um, that are not mentioned here, this may indicate pathologic condition. So these abnormal shapes may arise from trauma to RBCs. So mga turbulent blood flows, masyadong mabilis ang blood flow, masyadong mataas yung blood pressure, um, mga, mga fibrin deposition within the cells, and there are several there are actually several types of particular cells that you can see in RBCs. So we'll go through them one by one. So first is your echinocytes. So these are speculated. Yan yung parang mga durian, may mga spikes. So speculated RBCs with many uniform and even shaped projections. So there are actually three types, but you can classify them basically in two. So you have your type 1, which is your grenated RBCs. So in vitro, they are artifactual due to change. It could, they could, they are, yung mga cremated RBCs natin, they are in vitro artifacts. So maybe due to improper storage of your blood samples or hindi mo nga na-check um, immediately. So that changes in temp, pH, drying, and other interaction of bloods and smear preparation. So artifactual change na ito siya. You have your, next, you have your type 2 and 3, which are your birth cells. Spicules in the, they are spicules in the entire surface. They may be uh, caused by altered fluxing electro, electrolytes with expansion of outer cell membrane. So you can see this in dreamy conditions, electrolyte technicians, small lymphomas, Dr. Rubicin toxicity, and cases of glomerulonephritis. So, ito na nga sila. So you have your 
um, echinocytes type 1, which are um, maybe artifactual changes due to improper storage, improper smear preparation. They are seen, they are often um, artifact. Could be due to excessive EDTA. Your EDTA is your um, anticoagulant. So, ed, um, excessive uh, EDTA exposure. Now, the true pathologic um, echinocytes, echinocytes type 3 or your birth cells, they are spherical red cells with sharp projections of equal length and they are evenly spaced on the surface of the red cells. They may be increased in animals with renal disease and electrolyte disturbances. So, your birth cells or your echinocytes type 2 and 3 are associated with that and in cases of renal diseases and electrolyte disturbances or electrolyte imbalances. Next, you have your helmet cells or your keratocytes. So, you should be para lang para siyang helmets. So, these are crescent-shaped cells. Mga para siyang C, crescent-shaped shape. Excuse me, crescent-shaped cells. And the age, they are due to mechanical shearing. So, if you can see, parang may napunit, parang may part na pinunit sa RBC. So, due to, they are due to mechanical shearing. So, they have one or two projections that are that form ruptured vesicles. So, may mga projections na parang napunit baga. Then, this, um, this, you can see this, especially in cases where there is oxidative damage to erythrocytes. So, pag may napunit, syem, ah, pag may pinu, parang may cells na may pinunitan, merong mga cells na parang napunit mula sa cells. And these are your, these are your schizocytes or your schistocytes. So, these are regular RBC fragments due to shearing again. Intervascular fibrin or turbulent blood flow. So, again, sila yung kapares ng inyong um, helmet cells. So, this, they may occur in disseminated intervascular coagulation, mga hemangiosarcoma, glomerulonephritis, congestive heart failure, um, yellow fibrosis, chronic toxicity, toxicity, and cases of vasculitis. Again, because they may be caused by intervascular fibrin or turbulent blood flow. Um, again, attributed to mechanical injury such as this. Now, you have your spherocytes. So, spherocytes are associated with Im immune-mediated anemia. They have decreased MCV because they are smaller and very round shape. They are globoid and small. Um, the remaining cell membrane encasing normal hemoglobin content and they do not flatten well on blood films. So, as you can see here, wala, wala silang central pallor because maliliit, basically, maliliit sila na cells trying to contain a normal volume or normal hemoglobin content. So, very packed yung hemoglobin sa loob. That's why para siyang globe, para siyang globe, para siyang sphere. So, almost wala talaga siyang, or wala talaga siyang central pallor. Next, you have your acanthocytes. So, compared sa acanthocytes kanina where they are in, they have sharp projections, even the space projections, your acanthocytes have blunted projections. So, hindi siya sharp. So, this is a result of this irregular shape of RBC is a result of cholesterol, of lipid cholesterol ratio imbalance in the cell membrane of the RBCs. Pathologic conditions associated with this is your hemangiosarcoma, glomerulonephritis, malinfomas, and other liver diseases. So aside from those, you also have your leptocytes. These are thin, macrocytic, mamalalaking cells with membrane surface area that exceeds the hemoglobin content. Um, the membrane tends to wrinkle, you see here, fold, forming mga twisted cells, and they sometimes seen in hepatic diseases. So, leptocytes are cells na masyadong, kumbaga para siya, masyadong malaki yung um, cell membrane compared doon sa hemoglobin na dapat kinocontent niya. So, instead of it being medyo plump by concave kung sa dog, nag-wrinkle siya kasi masyadong madaming or masyadong malapad, supposedly, yung membrane niya compared to yung dapat niya na content na um, hemoglobin. Then you have your codocytes or your target cells. Of course, meron siyang target sa gitna. 
they have a dark central area of hemoglobin, you see here, surrounded by a pale zone that turns, that in turn is surrounded by peripheral rim of hemoglobin. So may, they may be seen up to 50% in canine RBCs and they are rarely observed in other species. So pag pasyado madaming podocytes, they may be um, they may be indicative of hepatic diseases. Next, you have your dacryocytes. So these are teardrop-shaped RBCs. So they may be considered artifactual if all points are pointed at, in the same direction because it may indicate na dun, uh, it may be due to blood film preparation sa pag-smear. Hindi maganda yung pag-smear. But increased number, um, kung hindi artifactual, non-artifactual lacryocytes may be found in Melofibrosis or melofibrotic conditions. Next, we have your exentrocytes. We have an exentric hemoglobin distribution so instead of it being distributed evenly in the cells or in the periphery na may normal, normal central pallor as you would expect. Um, the, it, 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 the distribution is unequal due to annealing of a crescent um, red cell membrane that excludes, excludes the hemoglobin. So basically, naka-ano lang siya. Naka even, it's an even distribution of your hemoglobin. So they may, indicated, they may indicate oxidative damage to the RBC membrane and may be um, accompanied by Heinz bodies. So kanina pa natin, dinidiscuss ito mga Heinz bodies, mga Howell Jolly bodies, Mr. Felix Tripling. So now, um, we will discuss the pathologic um, conditions wherein you will be able you may be able to see mga inclusion bodies inside your RBCs again your normal RBCs should not have um other content other than your hemoglobin so first is your basic felix tripling ito mga mga dots physical polar dots inside your RBC so they represent aggregation of residual RNA in stain films so mga naiwan unextruded um, nucleic acid content of your cells. So, this may be seen in anemic um, sheep and cattle, feline anemia, although occasionally regenerative anemia together with polychromatic cells or your reticulocytes and may be also seen in your um, lead poisoning wherein basophilic stippling together with metarubicides with polychromatia is seen in animals with normal RBC value. So basically, this tuldok tuldok that you can see here, this basophilic stippling is indicative of residual mga naiwang RNA sa dugo. So bakit may mga naiwang RNA? So as <laughs> ulitin ko yung sinabi ko kanina, in cases of anemia o mababa yung blood volume, mababa yung blood cell content ng dugo, binibilisan ng katawan kung gumawa ng blood cells. So sometimes, sa masyadong mabilis, instead of producing itong mga normal normal cells na wala namang dapat um, walang abnormality abnormalities abnormalities tend to appear such as polychromatic cells um eto mag cells with basophilic stippling because masyadong minamabilis ang ang paggawa ng RBC so it increased erythropoietic activity as a result to anemia Next, you have your Howell Jolly bodies. So again, these, these are basophilic remnants of the nucleus. So yung kanina, RNA, ngayon, your Howell Jolly bodies are nucleate, nucleate um, remnants. So they are unextruded nucleus as the RBC divides and develops. And normally removed, these are normally removed by spin. And it's frequently, again, frequently seen in cases of accelerated erythropoiesis or mga post patients. So, they, they may be considered normal in cats if very few lang, but siyempre, if madami na siya, it may indicate other pathologic conditions. So, this is usually seen when the, when the spleen is compromised. So, mga conditions that normal, that inhibit or hinder normal splenic function. So, let's say, excess corticosteroids, may increased cortisol, so may immune, anti-immune response, ang um, cortisol corticosteroids in cases of septicemia or endotoxemia so mga bacterial infections of the blood or general bacterial infections and in cases of hypoxia or um, lack or lessened um, oxygen content in the body
And last, you have your Heinz bodies. So this is this or due to oxidative, oxidative stress to hemoglobin. So they appear as spherical, clear, or light-colored inclusion bodies. So yung dalawa kanina, um, medyo colored na content, basophilic colored, so dark blue content in your RBCs. This time, the Heinz bodies are actually light or colored, lightly colored inclusion bodies. So they are, they are frequently seen in cats wherein the hemoglobin is very susceptible to oxidative stress, as previously mentioned kanina. So, this may be seen in cats um, in episodes of paracetamol, propylene glycol, or propofol toxicity, which denatures um, their hemoglobin. And in other metabolic um, conditions, such as your diabetes, diabetes mellitus, renal disease, lymphoma, and hyperthyroidism. Now, Let's go to methods of evaluating your erythrocyte function or again your erythrogram. So first you have your total erythrocyte count. So you may either do it manually through a hemocytometer and new Bauer slide. So in this slide you can see, I hope you can see but you may not see. Merong naka-etched na square dyan na madaming lines. So this, we will be able to do, you will definitely be able to do this, we will do this in your laboratory, wherein sa New Bauer slide, itong limang cells, yan, limang cells na may, block, na may red, dito ka magbibilang ng RBCs. Um, you can also do it electronically or automatically using RBC counting machines. And in general, they are important, the total erythrocyte count is important because um, they allow the determination of your mean corpuscular volume or the volume of your cells, yung volume ng content ng cells mo at saka mean corpuscular hemoglobin or the hemoglobin content of your cells. So, ito siya, RBC count. It's usually the first panel in your, the results of your hematology tests or hemat hemato hematology tests na iraran mo sa mga machines. Next, you have your hematocrit. So, they may be, um, usually you do the paxal volume or your hematocrit. So, this is the percentage of blood composed of your erythrocyte. So, usually do is do it to, through centrifuga centrifugation method. Um, as you can see here, um, we usually, in the laboratory, we usually do yung nasa capillary tube. So, capillary, very, very thin tube that we allow the blood to enter, then we seal at the bottom. Then, we run it through a micro hematocrit centrifuge. So, as we previously mentioned, your hematocrit is the percentage of the blood um, that is composed um, of your erythrocytes. So, as you can see here, if if successful at saka maganda yung pag-run ninyo ng centrifugation, magsiseparate out yung major components of your blood. So, of course, yung nasa bottom na red, yun yung, um, yun yung RBC or hematocrit ninyo. The percentage nito, um, using a ruler or using yung measuring guide, you can actually measure kung ilang percent yung um, RBC of the total blood. So, yun yung PCV paxel volume natin. In, in mga automated automated machines as previously mentioned dun sa sa previous slides you can also um, get the P your PCB result so for hemoglobin concentration naman usually what we do manually sa ating laboratory is that yung hemoglobin content is just the one third lang ng ano mo ng PCB or your hematocrit so for example 50, uh, yung hematocrit mo is 45, 45%. PCV mo is 45%. So, your um, hemoglobin content would be 15. So, there are different methods of um, if you really want to do um, uh, yung I, kung you want to be sure you, you want to really assure the um, um, hemoglobin content of your cells, you can do these different types of um, methods. So, there are important, um, these 
hemoglobin is, a, is an important indicator, is, a, is an important panel of your hemogram because again, your hemoglobins are the one taking up or carrying your oxygen. So if there is depleted hemoglobin, so there may be inefficient transport of oxygen to the other tissues that need it throughout the body of the animal. So as again, as um, going from what I previously mentioned, yung hemoglobin determination niyo, if it is within normals, it, it, is, it is generally uh, accepted as good because it may be indicative of the oxygen capacity or capacity or of oxygen transport capacity rather of the blood of the of your patient. And there are other as nulit lang dito, there are several methods of um calculating it. Um you have your, your automated methods, some automated machines, it would give, definitely give you an accurate count, but if you do not have such machines such as our case in our laboratory, you may use the PCV per the PC result and divide it by 3, then check if it is within the normal range. Now, we have your erythrocytic indices. So, ito are, they are very important in helping in classifying anemias. They are also assistance in selecting therapy um, and monitor established therapeutic procedures, of course. So first, you have your MCV or your mean corpuscular volume. Ito yung MCV na kanina pa natin um, dinidiscuss regarding your macro and microcytes. So, yung MCV is basically just the volume of each individual RBC. So, how do you calculate this manually? So, it's basically your PCV times 10 over your RBC count, which is in millions, then you will get your MCV or literally it is a volume, the unit of which is femtoliter. So for example here, you have a 45% PCV, so times 10 for 50 over 5 million per UL na RBC count. So divided, divide mo lang yun, you have your 90 femtoliters. So in average, um, it is basically the volume of the population of your erythrocyte. So as for your result, if the if the MCV is lower than the normal for that species, you we would usually say that it is the cells are macrocytic again because the volume is lower than what we would expect. So we 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 expect that the cell is smaller. Hence, macros we say that it is we interpret the result as macrocytic. So if normal naman siya within the normal range, this is for tao. Um, we say that it is normocytic, whereas pag masyado naman siyang malaki for its for the normal range ng for that particular species, um, they are macrocytic. So there are several factors that affect your MCV. So as previously mentioned, reticulocytosis again, maraming reticulocytes sa blood, they would tend to cause macrocytosis because again, your reticulocytes are if you can remember your figure kanina na they are they are larger cells then they are called polychromatic because they are bluish gray in color due to the residual RNA in the cell, they tend to cause macrocytosis or your mga malalaking cells. In contrast naman sa mga immature animals, they have low MCV due to microcytosis and may, it is caused by iron deficiency. So for example, Kaya nga tayo routinely, we routinely inject um, iron in B-complex sa ating pigs, sa ating piglets because of particularly this concern, iron deficiency in young. And of course, even sa adult na may iron deficiency, you would often see microcytosis kasi nga maliit, maliit yung cells because of the um, very little hemoglobin content due to iron deficiency. So microcytosis in dogs report as systemic shunts. Microcytosis, which is normally seen, which could be normally seen in your Asian breeds, so yung mga Akita, Shiba Inu dogs. Greyhounds would normally have a high MCV, so mga macrocytes, you usually see them. Congenital macrocytosis in poodles. Excuse me, hereditary stomatocytosis with macrocytosis in Alaskan Malamute and miniature schnauzers. Feline leukemia virus would, would cause macrocytic anemia 
in erythrocyte agglutination kasi nga the cells are clumping, it may be read as mga malalaking cells by other mga faulty, faulty reading of other machines. Next, you have your mean for muscular hemoglobin. So, it's basically a measure of how much hemoglobin is within an average RBC. And it is expressed in picograms. So, yung content ng talaga, hemoglobin content of your RBC. So, it's basically your hemoglobin content times 10 over the RBC count in picograms. So, for example, here kanina, di ba, 45% your PCB divided by 3, so it's 15 grams. Then, divide mo siya sa pa, yung initial count natin kanina na 5 million um, cells RBCs per UL, you would get that the, the MCH of this example is actually 30 picograms. So, there are several factors that affect the MCHC. Uh, MCH and MCHC. Uh, MCHC. Um, in general, um, MCH is influenced by the MCB. Because, of course, smaller erythrocytes would usually contain smaller hemoglobin content. So, decreased MCH. If there is microcytosis, you would expect that the MCH, the mean corpuscular hemoglobin content, would be also um, smaller. So, in cases of iron deficiency, again, less hemoglobin, it, this would probably result to lower hemoglobin content. Hence, the MHC is also, would also be decreased. However, in clinical cases, um, this is usually, MCH is usually um, kumbaga regarded as um, regarded and lower importance compared to your MCHC. Because both of them actually um, are measures of hemoglobin content in cells, but MCHC um, is not um, reliant on the cell count. So, speaking of MCHC, this is basically the, uh, the average hemoglobin concentration per average RBC. So, it is a measure of, um, yung ano niya, unit niya is actually grams per deciliter. So, it's, it's the gram of hemoglobin per 100 ml of erythrocytes. So, it is the most accurate of the indices because it does not require the RBC count. I previously mentioned ko na nga kanina, with regards to clinical use, mas, um, they would prefer, a reference would say that they prefer MCH compared to um, M MCHC compared to MCH because MCH is not reliant on your RBC count. So, how do you compute your MCHC? So, it's basically hemoglobin times 100 over the PCB. Um, as previously mentioned, again, the unit is grams per deciliter because 100 ml of erythrocytes. So, yun lang kanina. So, hemoglobin times 10 to so 15 times 10. So, ay, times 100 rather. So, 1.5 over the... PCB, which is 50, for example here, the PCB is 50, so the MCH is 30 grams per DL. So when the result of your MCH is below normal, so you tend to say, or above normal rather, kasi hyper, so you tend to say that there is an excess in hemoglobin concentration in the, um, in the average RBC, so it is hyperchromic. So as you can see here, there is a reduction of central pallor because napakadaming hemoglobin content ng cell. Pag normal naman, again, they are normochromic. And of course, pag very little or reduced yung content ng hemoglobin of your normal RBC, we tend to describe it or interpret it excuse me, as hypochromic. Next, you have your red cell distribution width. So basically, this is just a coefficient of variation of the red cell volume distribution. So to compute if mano mano mo yung RSW, it is basically the standard deviation of your MCV divided by MCV times 100. So it is an index or it is a measure of the degree of anisocytosis or variation in size of your RBCs. So 
pag merong pag they are magkakaiba-iba for this for example here there's high anisocytosis masyadong magkakaiba-iba-iba yung yung shape as shape size rather ng cells ninyo there would be a higher rdw but um also in cases of reticulocytosis of course in reticulocytosis madaming macrocytes because reticul reticulocytes tend to be bigger so yung distribution width din ng ano ng RBCs ninyo would be increased. So in normal uh, mga normal blood panel na pinoproduce na ng mga automated hematologic machines, merong na ang RDW. Next you have your reticulocyte count. So again, these are retic these are reticulocytes of the mga basophilic striplings due to RNA RNA remnants in your cells. So when the hematocrit is low, reticulocyte counts are actually done to differentiate regenerative versus non-regenerative anemia because if there are a lot of reticulocytes, it tends to um, infer or refer to that the case is a regenerative anemia because that, the body is trying to make RBC. So, reticulocyte is normal as a normal part of your erythro. Oh, this is as shown here. So the, the stain, you do not usually use your normal stain for blood count, but rather you use new methylene blue or super vital stain for you to be able to see yung mga basophilic strip links na andyan. So this indicate again, the bone marrow's response to anemia, specifically indicating that there is a rapid erythropoietic activity. So with this regard, um, you can actually calculate three um, reticulocyte counts, but is, it is usually lang naman, a percentage, so number of reticulocytes that you see in one field, tapos yung total na RBC, basically it's the percentage of reticulocytes over your total RBC that you see in one field. So, in dogs, there are different um, degree of interpretation ng results, so there, they, um, these, there are these ranges, some article site percentages, if it is already, of course, more than 20 or more than 4, less than 20 or 4 percent, is marked regeneration na in dogs and cats. But whereas, um, sa dog, if, if it is less than 1.5 or 1 percent, or sa cat, it's less than 0 0.04, a uh, 0.4 percent rather, then there is no regeneration. Aside from doing reticulocyte counts, you can actually also do bone marrow examination. So you have to remember that erythropoiesis is primarily occurs in your bone marrow. So if you want to check the erythropoietic activity or erythropoietic um, capacity over erythron, the entire unit, um, entire unit of measure ng inyong RBCs, you may also check your bone marrow. So technique, it would also, uh, you can do it through aspiration of your iliac crest. In your iliac crest, your trochanter, trochanteric fossa sa sternum or sa rib using an 18 gauge needle. So what you do there is you check the cell cytology count. You do cytology count. Um, you do the M or E rate, M to E ratio, so number of myeloid to number of nucleated erythroid cells. Um, yeah, and in and the normal M to E ratios for different species are actually here. Now, let's go to your anemia. Kanina pa natin may mention yung anemia. So, what, what does it really mean? So, when an, an, an animal is said to be anemic, if there is an absolute decrease in the PCV, in the hemoglobin content, and the RBC count of that specific animal. So, the, the easiest indication, the easiest test you can do is, of course, do the PCV. So, it could be classified according to the size and concentration of erythrocytes, a bone marrow response, and pathophysiologic mechanism. So, with regards to size and hemoglobin concentration of in erythrocytes, you can see here that um, in cases of cobalt deficiency together with uh, vitamin B12 or your cyanocobalamin, the size would be macrocytic, but the hemoglobin content would be normal chromic. In cases of erythrocytosis, following blood loss, so binamabilis ng, binamabilis ng katawan yung pag-produce ano, pag ng RBC, 
um, in response to blood loss, there is normocytic and normochromic blood. In chronic inflammatory diseases naman, you would usually see the same, normocytic and normochromic anemia. In cases of hemonchus, so for, for example, stomach worm infection, it would be normocytic, the cells would be, it, in, in anemic cases, it would be normocytic, but it would be hypochromic. In cases naman na may radiation or hypoplastic anemia, they are macrocytic, maliliit na cells, but contain normal hemoglobin content. Or in cases na may iron deficiency or there are blood-sucking parasites, they, would intend, they may have microcytic cells with hypochromic um, hemoglobin content. With regards to bone marrow response, it may be um, classified as regenerative or non-regenerative. So, of course, when it's, if it is regenerative, there is evidence that the bone marrow can respond by increased electroporosis. Hence, um, you do your teclocyte count and or you do your bone marrow examination to check if the bone marrow is actually responding or coping with the anemia. So again, release of, red, um, release of young RBC, so polychromatic pilic cells, so reticulocytes. Um, and of, of course, you need to check if the bone marrow is normal, pathologically, and the erythropoietin, that, which is the trigger for erythropoiesis, is continuously released in baseline on the, from the kidney strader. So if it is non-regenerative naman, so the bone marrow is not responding to the anemia. So there may be diseases that affect the erythropoiesis in bone marrow or the production of erythropoietin, which is the trigger point for erythropoiesis in the kidneys. So there are several causes of regenerative anemia. So a few examples here is that it, a regenerative may be seen, a regenerative anemia may be seen in blood loss, so mga trauma, coagulation defect, immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, oxidative hemolytic anemia, mga erythroparasites, so for example, you have your mga erythia, erythia, babesia, um, anaplasma. Then you also have your non-regenerative anemia. So, bone marrow neoplasia may cause this. So, mga leukemia, uh, bone marrow fibrosis, infectious diseases, primarily your feline leukemia virus, can, uh, chronic, chronic cases of ehrlichiosis, excuse me, toxicity, and chronic renal disease. So, problem in your kidney, of course, would that would impact the release of erythropoietin. So now let's go to the classification of anemia due to pathophysiology. So the, the first, you have your acute blood loss anemia. So do not be complacent that you are not seeing that blood loss is ni mo nakikita na nawawala yung blood kasi walang sukat or walang bleeding na nangyayari but rather because hemorrhage may be occult or internal hemorrhage may be occurring, di mo nga nakikita. Such is the case pag may thrombocytopenia so there are problems regards to its platelet. So what do you see labor in the laboratory findings pag there is acute blood, uh, blood loss anemia? So the PCB is initially normal because blood, yung components ng blood, the plasma, the cells are lost in similar proportion. proportion. But you may see hypovolemic shock, hypovolemia, hypovolemia happens because hypovolemia, ang meaning nito is that the blood volume is very, very low. Kasi nga, blood loss anemia, acute blood loss anemia nga ito. So, if all more than 33% of the volume is already lost, the patient may go to hypovolemic shock. So, shock due to low blood volume. So, initially, the splenic contraction would deliver high PCV blood to the circulation, which may temporarily elevate the PCV. Baka nagulat, magugulat ka that, let's say, a patient with bleeding for example, na may bleeding, bakit mataas naman yung PCV niya? So, this may be due to splenic contraction during cases of acute blood loss anemia. However, as time passes by, yung plasma, the, the volume of the plasma is increased because the fluid is drawn out from other parts of the body and enters the 
blood circulation. So, doon mo na usually nakikita na there is anemia because the volume of the blood is already na-replenished, starting to be replenished, but the number of cells is not. So, dito mo nakikita na your PCV is very, bumababa na yung PCV. Bumalik yung volume, but the number of cells did not. Platelet will increase, of course, because the body is trying to heal itself. It's trying to um, um, not allow the escape of blood anymore, so trying to heal itself. A neutrophilic leukocytosis would appear 3 hours post hemorrhage and um, signs of increased RBC lumalaban yung katawan would actually lumalaban yung katawan by increasing electrophoretic activity and signs of RBC production would actually appear only 42 to 48 to 72 hours. That's why in cases, mga emergency cases na there is severe blood loss, let's say yung aso na banggaan and may open wound at saka hemorrhagic siya, uh, hemorrhaging yung yung accident of accident wound it would usually need um blood transfusion in almost immediately because rbc production would would have to wait for the next um uh, rbc production would not be initiated um 48 to 72 hours so if you have cases you will be encountering cases that there is severe blood loss um do take note that um, erythropoietic activity after acute blood loss anemia would initially show up uh, 48 to 72 hours after the hemorrhage. So, in cases of chronic blood loss anemia naman, what do you see? So, anemia slowly develops because this is we're talking about chronic cases and hypovolemia does not usually occur kasi hindi naman acute na, let's say, nasugat yung nasugat o nasaksak yung aso labas lahat ng dugo so hindi naman lumalabas kasi nga it is chronic it's a chronic blood loss anemia the hematocrit can reach low volumes before um clinical signs of anemia become obvious because the slow onset of anemia allows physiologic adaptations because um primarily this basic example nito is yung mga parasitic uh, um yeah, hemolytic parasitic diseases niyo wherein the parasite would continuously feed on the blood but and the hematocrit would show that the blood there is anemia but the drop of the blood is very very slow the drop of blood volume or the hematocrit is very very low which allows a very slow and slow rather which allows for pathologic a physiologic adaptation to the patholo to the pathology of the infection so, in laboratory findings, you would see that regenerative response occurs, but is less intense. Hyponatremia would be observed. Hypoproteinemia, rather, would be observed. Such is the case in, let's say, fasciolosis. Although fasciola is not, um, is not usually a cause of anemia. So, persistent thrombocytosis may be evident because the time is, again, the, the the body is trying to adapt to the low and slow depletion of your RBCs. Then iron deficiency anemia may cause again microcytosis, hypochromasia. Develop over time as iron stores is being depleted or in, in cases of young pigs, hindi na sa supplyan ng enough iron deficiency, uh, iron supplementation needed for growth. So what? are the causes of this. So again, for acute hemorrhages, so acute acute blood loss anemia, maybe GI ulcers, mga hemostatic defects, so problem with your coagulation, blood coagulation, neoplastic, thrombocytopenia, trauma, or surgery. For chronic naman, you have your GI ulcers with neoplasms, hematuria, um, hemophilia, Neoplasia, mga cancer episodes, parasitism primarily, your ancillocyte, your ancillocytomiasis, so mga ancillostoma in your dog, mga coccygiosis, fleas and ticks, blood, blood sucking ectoparasites, hemonchus, as we just mentioned, um, strong gylosis, and mga vitamin K deficiency, which is, vitamin K is very important in your, in the creation of your, um, mga coagulation components. So, just a pahabol lang, of course, may internal, may external hemorrhages. So, when internal hemorrhages, of course, it pre of course, prevents reutilization. Pag external hemorrh hemorrhages, rather, 
it prevents reutilization of certain components. Because what, kasi syempre, yung dugo, nalalabas na. So, special component, there are blood components na, of course, hindi na na-reabsorb na, 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 and na-reuse ng body because external hemorrhage nga, nasa labas na yung mga blood components. When, when you compare it to internal hemorrhages na the blood loss is just in the body cavity and again, approximately two-thirds of those erythrocytes are reabsorbed into the lymphatics and again, they, they, they if the hemorrhage if the hemorrhage, internal hemorrhage after the results, the blood loss um, inside the body will just be reabsorbed and reused. When compared it to internal, external rather, na of course, nasa la in, labas na ng environment. Um, and the, the, the reutilization is prevented. So another type of anemia is hemolytic anemia. So again, these are anemias due to blood destruction. So it may be intravascular or extravascular. So intravascular, the RBC is sliced or nasisira yung RBC within the blood vessel. So it, there is hemoglobinemia. So basically, yung hemoglobin, the red pigment, the one that is inside the RBC, is nalalabas lang siya. So dito sa letter A. There is hemoglobinemia if the plasma if, if the plasma contains the hemoglobin due to the RBC being um, destructed or lysed, the RBC being lysed. So now, in contrast, you have your extravascular hemolytic anemia wherein the RBCs are lysed outside the blood vessels. So your macrophages um, in your spleen would destroy, destroy your damaged RBCs or there are other um, causes that may lead to RBC being lysed outside of your blood vessels. And what actually happens is hyperbilirubinemia. So bilirubin is a byproduct of hemoglobin um, hemoglobin um, hemoglobin breakdown. That's a product of hemoglobin breakdown. So, basically what this means is that the hemoglobin that, that, is, that escapes when the cell is sliced outside of the blood vessel is, has already gone through the breakdown process from the liver and from the kidney and increased bilirubinemia would result because um, RBC is being this is being lysed outside the blood vessel at an increased rate. So what you see is you have your plasma or you have your yeah you have your plasma that is extremely yellowish due to bilirubin the pig the pigment bilirubin. There are several causes of hemolytic anemia both intravascular and extravascular. So it could be infection so bacteria. RBC parasites, both of them may, may cause intravascular and extravascular. Maybe immune immune mediated. Maybe hypoosmolarity, although there is osmolarity imbalance within these within the intravascular environment, fragmentation, hypophosphatemia, and others. So same uh, basically it is the same here. Now there are several types of several causes. Which may actually be a manif which may manifest intravascular hemolysis or extravascular hemolysis. So please, I would like you to read on them in your reference texts. So now let's go to your polycythemia. So polycythemia is basically the kabaliktaran of your anemia. If anemia is um reduced RBC parameters, result reduced result of RBC parameters. Your polycythemia is the increased hematocrit RBC count and hemoglobin concentration. So there are several um, cases that would, um, example, as rather, that would lead to spurious or relative polycythemia. So artificial, somewhat artificial types of polycythemia. So this may be dehydration, of course. When the animal is dehydrated, you would expect that the plasma volume would be decreased. Hence, the PCV, the hematocrit volume, etc., would be increased when you try to calculate, when you try to evaluate it manually or even electronically or automatically. 
Second is redistribution of erythrocytes. So there are animals that um, when epinephrine um, causes splenic contraction, yung, the spleen would deliver mataas, a high hematocrit splenic blood to the general secretion, making it seem that there is polycythemia or mantaas yung hematocrit ng animal. So above normal hematocrit due to splenic contraction or due to dehydration. Next, you have your absolute polycythemia. Si absolute polycythemia naman, um, these are polycythemia cases that are actually pathologic in nature. So these, these are due to increased erythropoiesis, um, erythropoiesis activity. So this may be primary, a primary absolute polycythemia or otherwise known as your polycythemia vera or primary erythrocytosis. So due to, it is due to a myoproliferative rather, myoproliferative disorder of your stem cells. So basically what this means is that your RBC, your erythropoietic activity of your animal is increased. Erythropoietin um, concentration is um, could be could be in normal cases, could be in normal range rather, but the production is very very much active. This may be due to again this is due to a myoproliferative disorder of stem cells. So you also have your secondary absolute polycythemia, which is caused to increase erythropoietin secretion. So and compared to first your primary polycythemia, your secondary polycythemia is due to increased erythropoietin activity. So again your erythropoietin is the one that stimulates your erythropoietic activity, so increased production of your RBCs. So basically, this is just a due to increased erythropoietin, uh, erythropoietin secretion from your kidney. So these are um, some patholo pathologic conditions with regards to your polycythemia. So that is all for our topic within these two weeks. So basically, we discussed erythrocytes their, and their pathology, clinical pathology, clinical pathological aspects. So I would like to again request you to read the assigned reading assignments, reading materials to you, take down notes, um, use this lectures, uh, lecture video as a guide to your readings and your note taking. And if you have any questions, do not um, do not hesitate to ask in our Facebook group. Um, you can post a question there, or if you want to, you know, you can send an email to me to here to this email. So I hope you are all doing well. Um, please to stay safe. You know the conditions that the college are in health wise right now. So I do hope you enjoy your learning and. Thank you and have a great day.